thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing to do on a, a Monday morning. But what I wanted uh, to do is introduce Nirbai. Uh, he's, he's a student at Lewis and Clark Elementary, and he's been volunteering with Stars Technology. And I want um, uh, his colleague, I guess, uh, Dennis, to maybe do a better introduction than I can on his behalf. Um, and uh, if, if you can, you can come up here and talk a little bit. But thank you again all for coming. And if there are any questions, I'll, I'll circulate the, uh, this microphone around at the end of the presentation, OK? Thank you. Uh, and I have worked for years with talented and gifted kids um, with my own children as they were growing up and in the school district here. And, and I've rarely seen anyone that is so gifted um, and has learned so much at such a young age. Um, first of all, he has received the presidential award for his formation. He was one of the founders of Kids for Urban Trees in the, here in the city. He's also been a finalist in the National Energy Competition um, that involves Lego designs. And he is currently working on forming another nonprofit called Robotic Companion that will help seniors with robotic companions. Um, and when I met him at first, you know, you have to kind of change gears when you talk to someone that has is so advanced for his age because you're thinking you need to talk down to them and I've just stopped doing that uh, because he understands so much more than someone of his age but it's what's important here I think is what he's doing with what he with his skills and his abilities and um, you'll be surprised um, I think to see how much he's really learned and he, he kind of found out about us and wanted to know more about us. And it was like, this is a great opportunity uh, to help another young engineering kind of science and technician technology person coming up through the things. With that, I would like you to, to um, give a warm welcome to nearby Arun. Hi, I'm nearby Arun. I have been a continuous member of the first LEGO League. And today I'm presenting the next generation steam methane reforming. It is a non-toxic, energy efficient process so that greener transportation can be powered up. So the steam methane reformer has four parts. Number one, a heat exchanger or, or a recuperator. In this part, uh, there is a warming up of steam and methane before the reaction. And after the reaction, there's an output of a carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So here, um, the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen is cooled down. There's also a reactor's top and bottom plates. In the top and bottom plates, there are uh, catalysts. So these catalysts have coils that directly heat metal. The, there's also a middle layer in which a uniform heat is maintained inside the reactor. So in this map here, there are green hexagonal figures. This represent uh, potential hydrogen stations throughout the Pacific Northwest. And the yellow uh, lines represent highways. The red lines represent the natural gas pipelines. The white circles represent uh, cities. And the shades from light gray to dark gray represent the abundance 
of biomass. So STAR's goal is to produce more hydrogen with biomass in a cost-effective way. So here, other natural gas pipelines can also be used uh, significantly. And here, there is more uh, space uh, conservation and more hydrogen can be uh, stored, which is equivalent to uh, storing more energy. So in the steam methane refining process, there are various sources of biomass. The biomass is turned to, into a sludge form. The sludge is fed into an oxygen-free tank. Here, the biomass is fermented to produce biogas, and the biogas is processed to become RNG, or renewable natural gas. Steam is also fed along with the renewable natural gas into the steam methane reformer. Here, hydrogen and carbon monoxide is produced. The carbon monoxide is added along with steam so here, carbon dioxide and more hydrogen is produced. So this is the steam methane reforming process. Next slide, please. So the following picture shows the present applications of hydrogen-powered vehicles. So take a scenario. Imagine that there are 100 gasoline-driven cars going on a highway. Now, if we replace uh, all the cars into hydrogen with fossil hydrogen, then it's equivalent to taking 71 cars and replacing it uh, with hydrogen-driven cars. This is because in the process of producing hydrogen, which is called life cycle emissions, there are emissions. But there are no tailpipe emissions, which means the emissions that come out of the mufflers of our cars. And so the, if we replace the gasoline-driven cars with hydrogen, electrolyzer hydrogen, the next scenario, this process is carbon zero. There's no tailpipe emissions and no life cycle emissions. Now, in, in the third case, we have renewable hydrogen. Now, the hydrogen, using the hydrogen will start acting as a emission reduction agent. So here's my designs uh, of hydrogen powered vehicles. This is a tunnel boring machine and various appliances are powered by a fuel cell um, uh, a fuel cell, a hydrogen tank, and a battery. So here, what happens is that the hydrogen produced is fed into a fuel cell. The fuel cell turns hydrogen into energy and ha uh, and gives a byproduct of 
of, of water, just plain vapor. So this is how hydrogen is converted into energy. And the energy is used to power all the processes in this tunnel boring machine shown in the slide. So just like the previous design, a hydrogen powered streetcar has two fundamental components. One, a fuel cell which turns hyd hydrogen into energy, a battery, and, and a storage tank for portable high hydrogen transportation along the way. Oops, sorry. Any questions?